All right, here is another lock I got from Portugal. It is the Rhodes uh, 1990. Um, this is a like a cross lock. Looks a lot like the other, uh, like the 895 um, housing, but it's um, got a cross lock. And like the uh, 895, it's got an interior and exterior side to the lock. Um, the interior side is very simple. Uh, it only has three pins, I think three pins along the top, might, top. Uh, might be two, I think it's three along the top. Whereas this side has, uh, you know, I don't know how many, but the key is cut for five on each side, so up to 20 pins in there. I'm pretty sure it's not that many. But we'll go ahead and we'll try to pick it and then we'll look at what's inside as well. I have not gutted it, so um, hopefully I'll be able to, but we'll see. All right, I wonder if... It focuses well enough. Hopefully that's in focus because I can't pull it back in any further and on the focus. Um, so hopefully that's enough in focus. Looks like it's okay. I think it's okay. Um, for the interior side anyways. So, I'll go ahead and throw a tensioner in here. And, you know what? The key, right? So the key is not, uh, it's not, um, you can't put it in any other way except for the right way. So it only goes this way. Because it's kind of like a, a crucifix, not a plus sign, right? It's got a longer bottom on it. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And up top, this is a, I'm just using a Peterson hook one, doesn't matter. I should probably use a, the thicker thickness than this. But in any case, let's see what we got. We got a, oh, we got the, the tensioner sticking up too high and we got the whole lock turning in the vise. All right. Um, what do I feel up here? Three is jiggling, two is clicking, three is now binding, and it's open. So, I think that was two and three. Could have been one and two, I don't know. In any case, um, the lock itself, if you, uh, let's see, if you turn it to the left, Nothing happens. If you turn it to the right, the lock comes out there, the deadbolt, and again. And when you turn it to the left, nothing happens because from the inside, you can pull on this latch to pull in the, uh, the latch. I don't know what it's called. But from the other side, now here's the exterior side, um, we have, let's get that tighter. You, you don't have a latch accessible here, right, so for the other side. So what you do is you use the key and uh, you pull the latch like that. And then of course, just like the other side, you could lock it up to two times. So you could lock it and you can lock it again, right? So that would require you to pick it twice and then a third time to um, pull that in. Of course, you could use a plug spinner to, to jump over each time so you don't have to pick it over and over. And you know what, I've only picked it one step so I don't know if it, if the pins are not lined up so that it locks every 90 degrees or not, but if it does, then that's gonna be a whole lot of times you have to pick it. So let's go ahead and uh, slap a tensioner in here and give it a go. Um, I don't know, I'll start up top. Let's see if anything's binding up here. How do I wanna do this? Like this maybe? I don't think I feel anything binding up there. Nothing feels like it's binding up there. Let's check the left side. Oh, I think I might already click the first pin accidentally. Second pin is springy. I think, uh, can't quite tell if that third pin's binding. Oh, this one's binding. Got to click from the fourth pin. This pin feels springy. Third. Everything else feels springy in there. Let's try the right side. Uh, five. Sorry, my hand's getting in the way because it's a weird pick angle. Okay, maybe a little click from something up front on two or so. These pins are very forgiving. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure they're like the 895 where they're very rounded. So, um, 
near impossible to overset. Huge shear line on each. Is my guess. All right, I got a click from I think two or three on the top. Another click. Uh, I think that I think the first one was two, and then the second one was three. So I got two more clicks up top. Let's check the left side again. I'm just feeling for ones that are binding, so they they don't feel any sort of springiness. A little brief vertigo there. All right, I got something here at the back. I think it's five. A little click there. Oh, something here towards the front. I think number three or so. Maybe not. Yeah, it's jiggling some. So that one is already set. Let's uh, check the top one more time and then we're, we'll switch the tensioner to try the bottom. You can get some of the bottom pins from up here like this maybe. But that front one get in the way. So what we'll do is we'll take another tensioner up top and we'll try that. Sorry if that was loud. All right, front pin, front pin's binding. Okay, first pin is uh, jiggling now, second pin's binding. Oh, it's not going down, maybe I'm using too much tension. Okay, third pin binding. Same deal, too much tension, and we're open. All right, so only, only had to touch three on the bottom. You know what, we'll go ahead and test if it drops Oh, but then I might not be able to gut it without picking again. No, I'm not going to test it. Um, we'll go ahead and just lock it back up. It would be a nice test, but if it locks again, then I have to pick it again before I gut it, and I don't want to make a long video. All right, so there's that. Let's go ahead and put the autofocus back on again. Kind of noisy on this camera. Um, not on this camera. This lens is kind of noisy with its autofocus. So let's gut this guy. Um... A pinning tray. There's a screw right here. Take that out. And that will allow this to come off. There's the internal part. I think I showed this with the 95, but if you put the, the key in here the right way around, you see it sticks through. So the end bits don't interact with it at all. Just like that, and then it looks like this part up here will lock and unlock it um, when it catches up here. And then this piece here um, is for the latch. And then, so that, that thing is not tall enough to hit that, but from the other side, you would hit that with the uh, exterior one. So, I don't care about that one right now. Let's bring this guy back in. Um, a couple more screws here to remove it from the plate there. Alright, put that aside. Let's get in a little bit closer. And we got some flathead screws. We got a little actuator there. These are long screws. These ones were really hard to remove initially. They were uh, uh, starting to strip them and stuff. Okay, so there's those two. Those aside. And now use the same followers for the 895, but I put some tape on it because that one was a little bit thin. Maybe this will be thicker. Oh. I have a it's a smaller plug. It's a smaller plug than this. So one second. some followers from the other room. Hopefully I have the right size. I don't know. I didn't even... That looks like it might work. Let's try that. Okay. I didn't even test if the, if the plug will come out with a key or if it's got to get something drilled. Okay. And I'll do it straight up and down. It's a little bit loose. Fatter. That's still a little loose. You know what? We'll grab. Zoom out a little. We'll 
do is we'll grab some tape like this. And we'll wrap it around the end of the follower like this. Cut it off. All right, hopefully this will make it a little bit better. Got a little fold there. Up a little so it doesn't catch. There we go. Follower modification on video. Let's try that. Hopefully that will get us what we want. So I don't want it straight up and down. I'll turn it about 45 degrees and then do it like this. Okay, it seemed sounded successful. So there's that. Over a little. Okay. Um, I'll take the key out, hopefully without losing all the pins. Okay. How are we gonna do this? Um, the top is here, so the top has five pins, right there. Um, I should have thought this through a bit better. All right, fifth pin on top. Put that here. I probably I'm not gonna take. I'm gonna. I'll take maybe one driver out. I won't take all the drivers out. That'll be too crazy. Three, and I think these pins are similar to the 95. Let's see. So pin, come on. Um, the key pin is looking double sided. Okay, so this one doesn't look like it got filed down. At least let's check one more. It doesn't. Oh, it got a little file down, yeah. On one side, it looks like one side's pointing, the other side has a little, a little bit of file marks on it. So it looks like they do a similar thing with this one, unfortunately. Um, left only has four pins. For some reason, that middle chamber is blocked there. So four on the left. Oh, sorry, that's going to be five because chamber three is blocked. Two and one. So that's the left side. The bottom, again, has four, so it has the middle chamber blocked again for the bottom side, so uh, five, four, two, and one. And then the left side has, oh, these ones are really filed. So five, has five pins here. So this, this, this lock has a lot of pins. It's uh, 18 pins in it, which is a lot of pins, but wasn't still wasn't bad to pick. Yeah, this looks so beat the way they do this, the filing. We'll look at um, we'll get one driver. Hopefully we can get one driver, and not four at once. They don't they don't seem to be staggered, so we'll have to get a little lucky. They don't. Seem to be staggered. This one might come first, the right side one. There we go, the right side one, got one. So the driver, like the 895, it's just a standard driver, but I don't know if you can see, it's really rounded on both sides. Like the taper, not the taper, but the bevel is huge, right? And what that does is it makes the shear line uh, really big because if you take one of these key pins and these two touch together like this you can see that big gap between the two on the edge that means that you can set the pin anywhere in that whole gap anywhere in that whole gap and it will open um, that's also expanded by whatever um, whatever gap you have between here and the and the cylinder right that between the plug and the, uh, the cylinder if there's a gap there, that's also adding to the shear line, and especially because they're like filing these down to get the the key pins the right height. Um, that means that this is a little bit flat. That means it's not flush with the uh, outside of the cylinder, which means it has a bigger shear line, which makes it a lot easier to pick. So, any any case, that is 
pretty cool lock again from Portugal. It's the Rhodes 1990. Let's take a quick look at these pins, even though they're not particularly fascinating. And uh, that's it. All right, thanks.